I saw a science news article that just came out today that I had to talk about. I've uh, written about and given speeches about how sensationalism spoils science, meaning that when journalists publish a story in whatever news outlet, they traditionally spice up the headlines to entice their reader, and the result would usually be misleading. Like how every fossil ever found typically results in a headline saying that it caused scientists to rethink their theories or something along those lines. Even when the find is exactly what the scientists expected and predicted, but having a headline that says that, you know, mounting evidence continues to confirm the status quo isn't going to sell the story. It has to be controversial somehow. So they say something like this instead. But what does that imply? That a theory is just a guess, no more than baseless speculation like religion is? Because that's what religious people think whenever they see a headline like that. What does it mean when scientists rethink their theories? Is it that this new information means that the theory was wrong? By which, in this case, we mean the theory of evolution is wrong? The one and only scientific explanation of biodiversity? That's never been the case in any instance I've ever seen where this kind of headline was used. But that's what the uneducated laity always thinks it means. And I know because they keep throwing things like this in my face, not having any idea what the articles they're citing actually say. But then the story itself may be misleading too. It's not always necessarily factually inaccurate, although I've seen enough of that as well. Uh, more often, it's just careless in how it's phrased, not taking into account how the average person would likely misinterpret the sentence if phrased this way, or it wouldn't have confused anyone if phrased this other way instead. Usually, this is the fault of journalists who don't understand the science because they're not trained for that, because they're usually writing for the popular press, where the primary goal is to make an inviting story for the reader, uh, who probably doesn't understand science either. But the article I'm talking about today didn't come from some tabloid, nor was it from one of the pop sci mags like uh, National Geographic or Science Daily. No, this was no less a source than Science Magazine, the online version of the respected peer-reviewed scientific journal, which makes this especially annoying, at least for me. Look at this headline. Half-billion-year-old sea squirt could push back origins of vertebrates, including humans. Is the sea squirt a vertebrate? No. As the article explains, it's a tunicate, a marine invertebrate that shares a distant ancestor with vertebrates. Do American readers always understand that the category of vertebrates includes humans? Not to my experience. Most Americans in my world don't seem to understand how they are mammals. And many of my countrymen are more likely to read this as implying that whatever a sea squirt is, is somehow pushing back the evolution of humans, the genus Homo and specifically sapiens, by a half billion years, as if our species is supposed to be a half billion years old, because that's how old this fossil is, at least according to evolutionists. <laughs> yes, one would have to be pretty stupid to misinterpret this that badly, but you probably know someone who definitely would misread this that way. Never underestimate the potential stupidity of the willfully ignorant Americans, at least half of which are science deniers of one form or another, creationists, flat earthers, anti-vaxxers, and so on. It's a shame that we were once the leaders in scientific exploration, experiment, and discovery, but now the level of scientific literacy is so low that it makes the title of this magazine look like an oxymoron. An oxymoron is a figure of speech that has two contradictory or opposite words appearing side by side. Those words don't even go together. It's it's like military intelligence. Jumbo shrimp. Scientific American. Now look at the quote below the headline. Rare fossil looks like it died yesterday. That was meant to show how this fossil was very well preserved. But we all know someone who would say that it means that it did die yesterday, or that at least it died relatively recently, at some point within the last 4,500 years since Noah's flood. But that's just a quote. Deeper in the text, we read how this exquisitely preserved 500 million year old fossil is a dead ringer for some tunicates today. 
All that means is that it has the diagnostic characteristics of that clade. Two siphons to filter the organic particles of the water and complex musculature controlling the siphons. You could say the same about another 500 million year old fossil from another group of Cambrian chordates that are even more basal to vertebrates. We could say that Picaya, for example, is a dead ringer for some chordates today and that it has a spinal cord wrapped in hypaxial musculature, just like humans still have. So this does not mean that tunicates have not evolved over time, though many Americans will interpret it that way. Even though the article also explains that there is now a few thousand species of tunicates occupying nearly every ocean habitat all around the world, so they've obviously been around for a while. The article even mentions a Precambrian precursor in the form of a 520 million year old fossil that is tunicate ish, but that it is still distinctly different than anything alive today, just as we would expect, right? But that's not how the average man on the street would read it. What this article is really saying is that although we already knew that the evolutionary divergence of tunicates and vertebrates must have happened over 500 million years ago, there should have been a fossil record for the co-evolution of tunicates, but we haven't happened across any such fossils until now. The article says that um, the scientists can't explain that, but the obvious explanation is that they're small and soft-bodied, and the only way to get soft-bodied fossils is under the most pristine of conditions, which is applicable in this case. At one point, the article even says that the existence of such a complete and recognizable tunicate at this time could also push back the origin of vertebrates, now thought to be about 450 million years ago. But that's not right at all. The article itself already mentions a number of other fossils, basal to vertebrates, dating to 500 million years ago and even earlier. And we know a few others from even earlier than that. So knowing that, this article doesn't make any sense. Whenever the first tunicate emerged has nothing to do with when chordates of a sister lineage eventually enclosed their spinal cord in vertebra. That can only be determined by other fossils, like Hycoichthys, which was discovered at the end of the 20th century, so it's been a few years we've known about that one, and they already possessed rudimentary vertebrae by at least 518 million years ago. Sadly, the real value of the reported tunicate fossil in this article and its importance and how it relates to the evolution of vertebrates is sadly muddied by how sloppily the article was written. Because if you don't already know better than what the article says, you're going to get confused. <laughs>